everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report, and I am delighted to welcome Tracy Burzal to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. Tracy, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. You know, you are in season two of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And what a great, fun show. Talk to us about your experiences doing that. Oh, it's a great show. And I love comedy. So I, I do mostly, you know, darker things or drama or sci-fi. And, and so when I got the call to do that, I was, I was really excited because there's like, you know, Saturday Night Live actors and amazing sketches and and so it was just, it was a really good time. I love comedy because it's like a dance and I don't get to do enough of it. And so it was, it was just, it was fabulous. And Tim Heidecker was fabulous and everybody was great. I really enjoyed it. Well, Seth Rogen tweeted saying it was absolutely <laughs> the most uproariously funny thing that exists. I mean, it doesn't get more complimentary from that. What other feedback have you gotten? The feedback's been really funny. I actually, I, I don't always spend that much time looking at it, but the, I think you should leave profile and the hashtag on Twitter has just been absolutely hilarious. And everybody has their favorite sketches and they repeat their favorite lines. And I chimed in on a couple of people chiming in on my lines and defended myself. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it is a diehard community. It is really, it is really fascinating. And I saw that tweet from Seth Rogen actually. Yeah, I think the community is growing because, you know, frankly, I don't, Tim Robinson, when I first heard about the show for a split second, I was like, Tim Robbins, it's like, oh, I didn't know <laughs> Tim did comedy. <laughs> so anyway, it's been a fun discovery and it, it just reminds me of great SNL sketches just put together and, but with its own interesting take on things. I think it's kind of an absurd take on it. Like they take everything a little further than they did in, in SNL. And I think that's what I like about it. Cause I love, I call it raunchy guy comedy. And um, <laughs> this is, this is kind of, it's kind of like that. You know, there's, there's no holds bars. Nobody's stopping anybody. And I just think it's super fun. I mean, we need to laugh more. Absolutely. Well, I got some great laughs out of it. So thank you, <laughs> Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> but I want to shift gears and I want I want to talk about your role as Dion on the Time War, which is coming up. And I understand the first draft of the script for it was written in 1992. It was, it was. And it is a behemoth of a project. It started off as a long feature and then it just grew and grew and grew. And I didn't come into the project until it was starting production. And, um, but when I did, I mean, I just, I, I can't believe how, how deep the project is and how multi-layered and how, how hard it was. And you know, it's like, but we literally shot in 15 different countries. We shot all the way from Cleese Fortress in Croatia. We shot the top of the Austrian Alps. We, we shot out in um, Scotland Highlands. We shot in many places in England. I mean, it, just, it was just a, a gigantic undertaking and it, it's almost like one of those pinch me moments that it's done and it's in post-production it's actually going to come out because I've poured my whole heart and soul into it for so long. When do you think it's going to come out? It is in the final stages of post so I would say it'll be completed in about three months and then I would then you've got to give them time to figure out director has to figure out which outlet he's going to use and stuff like that but it'll be before the end of the year. So it's really, really exciting for something I've worked on for so long. <laughs> it's like, well, that must have been thrilling to shoot in all those international locations. And then tell us about the film that kind of is a, a special for it that is um, At the Edge of Time. At the Edge of Time is a, kind of like in sci-fi, they quite often do a special. And this is kind of a spin-off special film for it. And it has, you know, lots of the same cast, some different cast, and it kind of explores it in a different direction. So the Time War is really about Adolf Hitler traveling through time, rewriting history in order to rewrite his genetic code because he has a messiah complex. And so there's other spin-offs and how that character goes 
in the special. So it's, it's kind of neat because the whole package is going to be done at the same time and it'll all be able to come out at the same time if they so choose. And it, it's just, it's, it's pretty exciting. Well, you have some other projects coming out as well that you're producing and starring in. So do you want to talk about Evolution, War, and Age of Darkness? Sure. Um, Age of Darkness and Evolution War are based upon Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter, which I did a few years ago. Yeah. And that had such a good feedback from everybody. And so this is a series and a film based upon that movie. And so it's just what happens, the continuation and some of the backstory. So that's, that's again, a lot of action, um, a lot of just wild things. I don't know. It's just really fun. I can't, I don't know how much of that one I'm allowed to talk about, but. I, I had a feeling you wouldn't be able to say much, but you'll <laughs> always be rogue warrior, robot fighter to a, a big segment of fans. So talk to us about the impact of that movie. Well, I grew up a sci-fi geek and a nerd and a tomboy. So that was kind of a pinnacle of it for me because it was all the things that were always different about me, almost being celebrated in my craft that I could actually run and fight and jump and do all these things that were so, so much me. You know, so there was so much me in that character and most characters don't have that much me in them. And it's also it's also quite a, a drama. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's there's many, many layers to the character and self-realization and self-discovery. And and it's it's really it was just kind of um, I didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it, it was really kind of a, a dream project to work on. Yeah. Well, it's been, you know, it's so memorable for your career. And it's good to hear about, I'll just call them the spin-off projects, but I do want to get back to comedy for a moment, and maybe people don't know this about you, but you were a member of the Groundlings, the famed LA comedy improv troupe, which has spawned so many amazing, talented people. So I'd love to hear about your experiences with the Groundlings. Well, I, I love comedy and I love, I call it playing, you know, I love playing and I love building upon things. And so I joined the Groundlings long time ago and just kept building on it working my way up the layers and and you know you do you do little shows you do this stuff but for me it's not that different than when you're a kid and you're playing make-believe with your friends out in the front yard and I did I did try to sell tickets when I was a little kid I didn't do very well <laughs> but um it's kind of the same thing you know and it kind of if you think about it, even that layer of things in the groundlings plays into sci-fi later because it's make-believe. You know, you're making up what the situation is, you're rolling with it. And, and in sci-fi, sometimes more than half of what's going on isn't actually happening when you're reacting to it. So it's, um, it's all play, you know, comedy is play, um, sci-fi is play. It's all, it's all imagination and character and being, yeah. Well, Tracy, you have so many cool projects going on between your comedic stuff and the sci-fi films and television shows, but I want to raise a toast to you as we're wrapping up our happy hour. Okay. So here's to your continued success. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.